In this video, we want to take a look at creating a static web app. For what we're doing today, we're just going to be putting up uh, static HTML. There's not going to be any, it's not like a React project or there's no, uh, nothing, it's not going to do APIs or anything like that. It's just static HTML. So let's get ready to build this out in Azure. So we've got our website, and if we look at it on our local computer, just double clicking the file, uh, it looks something like this. And that's fine. It's just uh, all our text right now. It's all of our data. We don't have our images or our tables in here yet, and we don't have any uh, styling with it to make it look uh, prettier. In our GitHub, we've got two files. We've got the readme and we've got the index for right now. And if I'm on the main branch, I can see those files. I have five branches. So if I click in here, I can see the other branches I've created as I was building. But I want to be on the main. And if I look at index, I can look down and I can find that all of my code has been merged into main um, and it's ready to go. So I want to take this uh, at this point in the process and put it on a server. So I'm going to go to Azure and I'm going to log into portal.azure.com. And when I log into portal.azure.com, I am going to click on resource groups and create a resource group. And for the subscription, you should see uh, something about a student subscription. Uh, you don't want to see anything about the university or any other thing weird. It should have the word student in there. And if you don't, you can select a different one here. And if that doesn't work, uh, let me know and I can try to help you um, get onto your, your student account. Resource group name, let's call it module seven. And for the region, pick uh, one of the East US's or one of the West US's. I'm just gonna stick with East. Review and create and create. And it very quickly creates the resource group. Next thing I'm going to look for is static web app. And I'm going to create a static web app. And again, I'm going to make sure I'm in the right subscription or should say something about student. Um, I'm going to pick the module seven resource group that I just created. And then I need to enter a name for this. Um, I'm going to use, let's use our student ID. dash mod seven. Let's use the free version. Deployment is going to be through GitHub. And if you don't see your name here, then you'll need to log in to GitHub. Then we can come down and organization is just our name, our GitHub account. The repository is the repository where all of our data for this project is located. And then we want the main branch. Remember main is our known good. So uh, whenever something gets merged into main, that means it's good. It's ready to go on the server. So we want the server to pick it up. And create. All right, when we see this deployment in process, let's go back to our repository. And we can see now that there is a new folder, .github forward slash workflows. Inside of here is a file that has a very long name, but it ends in .yml. That's a YAML file. Okay. Uh, when we created the static web app here on Azure, and we told it, let's use GitHub for deployment, and we picked the repository, and we picked the main branch, it created this hook into that branch. So now whenever something gets pushed to main, this will let the Azure web app know and the Azure web app will pull down the new files. And the other thing that we want to look at here are actions and those YAML file control the actions. And we can see right here, that we've got this yellow circle spinning, so things are working. We can click this, and it expands. And we can see that build and deploy is finished. 
After we see success, let's go back to portal and let's actually go to our static web app. So we go to home and we should see something like our ID dash mod seven. Let's click that. And over here on the right is a URL. Let's copy that. And then let's go to that URL. All right, it's running on the server. So notice this ends with conclusion. Let's go put a footer in here so that you can see how this works. So I'm going to go back to my code. Actually, I'm going to go to GitHub Desktop. I'm going to create a branch. I'm going to call this branch footer. And I'm going to make sure it's active. And then I'm going to go to the HTML all the way down to the footer tags. And this would be Matt Colbert and Mike Colbert. It would be the authors of the paper that we're using to um, practice our HTML. Okay. And again, I want to validate this. So let's use HTML validator. We're going to go to the W3 markup. We're going to go to direct input. And I copied all of the code, the HTML code. I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to check it. These trailing slashes, this is okay. That's just information. Uh, Prettier adds those in there, um, but it doesn't impact anything. This is still valid code. We don't have any warnings or any errors. Okay, so the code's valid. I'm going to save it. I'm going to commit it. Okay, so I'll push that footer branch up. Let me go back to main. And then let me merge footer into main. And push. Now, if we go to GitHub, Actions, we can see that was our commit. We can click into it, we can click into it, and we can see it doing its thing, working down through here. Okay, it says complete job, and we have a green check mark, so we are good. Now let's go back to our URL for that web server. And let's just reload it. And if we scroll to the bottom, we can see our footer. Okay, so now updating our web server is as easy as working in a topical branch when we're happy with our work, merging it into main. When we merge it into main, this workflow picks up and tells the server there's new code, pushes this, the code to the server, and then after everything completes, and we can watch it complete here in Actions, uh, then we know, and we can check on the, on the server, uh, and we can see the, the updates.